Welcome back to Machinist Made. Today we are going to go over the facing tab and process inside of Fusion 360. To get started I'm going to do a quick setup. I'll quickly walk you through that setup. What we're going to be using today is a simple part. I call this my program and verify challenge for my students that I teach for. We are already located in the correct area. My stock is going to be a fixed size value. Offset from top, 20 thousandths. This is just my go-to. I'm going to take 20 thousandths off the face of the part. And then that's all I have to do. My file name, I guess I could call it not 8005 P and V C1. And then at my work coordinate system, I can make sure I'm in G54. This populates whenever you bring in a machine, and then I can click OK. Now again, if you didn't see my last video to turn this machine off, we simply just click the little eyeball. Now we can talk about facing. So to face this part, we simply click on facing. We go in here and we need to select tool. Now all of the tools that I'm going to use throughout this entire series is located within the Fusion library. So Fusion 360 library, milling tools, facing mill, two inch. And it's just got some very bog standard uh, RPMs in here. Mash select. And now that tool is imported into our file. We are going to make some slight changes. This part is out of steel, and you're not going to run a face mill at 5,000 RPMs in steel for very long. So I'm going to change this to 1,875 RPM. And then I'm also going to change the feed per tooth, not the cutting feed rate, feed per tooth for this tool is six thousandths per rev. Once I've done that, there's really not much more I actually need to do to this part. We're gonna simulate this and then I wanna go back and show you some other features. So this part being two inches wide, it's gonna wanna make two face cuts. This is within the, the parameters that we're gonna go back and look at here in just a second. This is just a coming down. It's got this lead in swoop, goes across, turns, and comes back up. Now, let's say we want to simplify this. We don't need all this funny stuff right here. We want our step over to be a little bigger. Maybe we want to change a few things. You just simply right click back on your process and click edit. Now, the geometry is the part. Now, if you needed to change that, you can go in here and change it. Um, you would just do stock selection and select your stock. I'm not going to do that because mine's already selected. Under our heights tab, this sets our entry and exits and part heights and all that stuff. This is where we're going to start. So let's say I want this program to run efficiently and as reliably as po possible, right? I don't want this program to be very confusing for the, for the operator, for the setup guy, for the next guy down the line. So all these different heights mean exactly what you think they're going to mean. 0 0.6 is a clearance height. Feed and retract is 0 0.2. The bottom is 20 thousandths. These, these mean exactly what you think they do. So for my clearance height, I don't want retract height. I won't. I'm sorry. I do want retract height, but I want to change that to zero. I want my retract, my feed, and my clearance to all be the same height. I'm not trying to jump a feature on this part. I'm not trying to hit a clearance area to make sure that I'm good. This just takes a line of code out of the program. So instead of our program going uh, G0, Z.6, it's going to go G0.2. Now the next thing that I'm going to change is absolutely nothing. This is the only thing I like to change in here. Aside from that, I'm going to go to my Passes tab. And then I can change all of my base parameters within here with the exception of one. So let's say I don't want to mill from both directions as you've seen it went across, come around, and went on. Let's say I don't want that. Let's say I only want to mill in one way. 
So typically on a mill, you are climbing. So I only want a climb mill, and I want my extension to be a little bit more than an inch. Let's say 1.1 inches instead of 1 inch 4 tenths. Also in here, you can do multi-depth. So let's say we were taking 200 thousandths off this part, and your machine doesn't quite have the horsepower to do that. You can specify a maximum step down, and then you can make multiple passes from there. In this part example, there's only 20 thousandths. The last thing that I'm going to change within this tab is my lead in and lead out. Let's say I don't want that. In our transition type, we want straight line. Remember again, when it came across the part, when it got off the other side, it made a turn. And let's say for the simplicity sake of a program, we want straight line. We want it to feed across, move over, and go back across the part. We can simply click OK. What this will do is completely change the program. It goes across, it picks up, moves over, drops down, goes back across the part. This is much simpler, and I have found this gives a better surface finish. Simply because the tool is traveling in the same direction both times. Now let's say for instructional information, we want to leave more material on the top of our part. Let's say we're going to leave 250 thousandths on the top of our part, leaving a lot of material to come off. Now obviously we don't want to take that all in one pass, so we would go back to our facing cycle in passes, multiple depths, and take off our desired amount. In this case, I'm going to use 50 thousandths. And we're going to click OK. Now you'll see it's taking multiple passes. Another thing you can do is go back into passes and change our step over. Our step over is location to location on the pass tab. This is a two inch face mill. So let's say we wanted to go 1.9 inch step over. We can do that and now Let's say we want a 0.5 inch step over for whatever reason. Again, instructional information. And now you see how many passes we are taking to get across this part. Another thing that we can do, again, for the simplicity's sake of education and production value, actually, is go to our height tab and change all this to 100 thousandths. See, everything gets really close to our part. And then once we are done here, we can just click OK. And now we're that much closer to the top of our part. So before we were 200 instead of the 100. This will create a slightly faster part, but we're talking milliseconds. We're not talking full seconds. We're not talking about minutes. We're talking about milliseconds. But I guess if you're running 10,000 parts, even the milliseconds add up. That concludes it for today's demonstration on facing in this series. Hope you like and subscribe and I hope to see you back here.